Hi, this is Andrea for the Learning Bear Podcast, your resource for wild professional development. Today we're going to be doing a book review of yet another book that I've read by Peter Volvin uh, called The Inner Life of Animals. I imagine if anybody has read or watched all of my reviews, which I doubt, uh, they're probably growing weary of this author. But I tell you, there are Only a few authors alive today that I would like to meet and talk to and uh, totally fangirl and have them sign my books. And um, Peter Volbin is definitely one of them. Unfortunately, I cannot speak German. The Inner Life of Animals by Peter is just as excellent as the other two books that I've reviewed, uh, The Hidden Life of Trees and The Weather Detective. I have only yet to read uh, The Secret Wisdom of Nature. And as usual... Uh, Volbin explains his perspective on animals very clearly, very easily. I appreciate uh, how thoughtful he is in his determinations about animals. So many times when reading a book, I, reading the book, I circled a passage and wrote yes, or I felt that, or amazing perspective. Uh, he's just, he's incredibly thoughtful and observant as a person, just in general, and also because he's a forester, so um, he has that connection in his uh, professional life as well. There's some highlights, of course, that I want to mention per the usual. Uh, I love how empathetic he is towards pigs, all animals really, Um, but I connected with that the most because I'm a born and raised country girl. My father has always loved filling the property with farm animals, and pigs were a popular choice in the early years. Um, Our first pig, his name was Wilbur, Yes, it was named Wilbur, and he was an exceptional pig, Uh, extraordinary even, (laughs) so smart. I could tell uh, at a young age how similar Wilbur was in intelligence to a dog. I really connected with those parts in the book because I have had a lot of those personal experiences myself, and when he talked about uh, the goat stink during rut, I could smell the goat stink as he was talking about it. My parents have goats, and... When their male goat (laughs) did his thing, it is the stinkiest stink I've ever smelled. It's so sour and so nasty, and it permeates everything. It's so gross. Um, Apparently, it drives the lady goats wild. Me, personally, not so much. Uh, (laughs) So the connections that I form when I read his books are what keep me engaged and something that I don't always feel when I read a book, especially a nonfiction book. I also love that Volubin talks about all those creatures labeled as pests. I learned so much about them. Um, And, you know, some of them I don't even really consider pests. I know they have a purpose. Uh, They're part of the ecosystem for a reason, unless they're invasives, of course. Um, And when I teach, I don't shy away from those sort of pest-like animals like snakes and spiders and other assorted bugs and birds. I I definitely agree that they're annoying sometimes. I mean... My ankles swell up when I get bit by mosquitoes because I'm allergic to whatever it is. But I know that they serve as a pretty big food source for a lot of creatures. So, you know, um, the reality is we live in their home and they are here for a reason at the end of the day. Uh, I enjoy that he has the same sort of mentality and embraces the stigma associated with like ticks and others and uh, provides a new perspective. Uh, The book is just, it's really eye-opening. I learned a lot about uh, some little like weevils and these little um, water bears, and it was just, it was really cool. In his other books, I believe I noted some flaws, and there really aren't many to mention, and what I'm going to mention aren't really flaws, (laughs) I wouldn't say. I did notice, because I've read his other books, that he uses some anecdotes from uh, his Hidden Life of Trees books in the Inner Life of Animals books, but again, I've read all three of his books, or three of his four books, I should say, and there's bound to be some overlap. I don't think that is a flaw so much as a reward for me for paying attention and remembering those examples. I read trees in like March or February or March. So it's for me to remember it here now in September. That's pretty good. I feel pretty good about that. Uh, Both for me and for him, because it must've been powerful enough an example that I did remember it, you know? So I did, I did struggle in a few sections um, where mother animals were losing their babies and I've experienced that. So that was kind of a struggle, Uh, but those are personal things. And, Honestly, it's probably not going to affect most people. And it's recent for me. A couple years down the road, it probably wouldn't affect me. Now, my scoring system is based on structure, content, meeting objectives, and creativity. Five points each. 
Uh, the flow and the content of this book are solid, which I would expect. Uh, third book into his sort of informational series. They're not, it's not like it's a sequel or something, but they're, they're all somewhat related. And he does reference um, his Hidden Life of Trees books occasionally. Uh, he has an exceptional amount of research to back all the chapters, and it's so fluidly organized. Um, sometimes when I read science books, they're kind of choppy. They're all over the place. It's, and it's like, what is really even going on here? Um, his books are not like that. I also really like that his um, his chapters are short, but they're effective. And I, you know, as someone that's very busy and has a lot of irons in the fire, uh, it's nice that I can read like a two page chapter and feel like I got somewhere. Um, as far as objectives go, his subtitles mention love, grief, compassion, and surprising observations. He hits those easily. Uh, he lives in a very unique situation where he not only works in nature as a forester in Germany, he also lives in a forested lodge. So he has this privileged opportunity to witness so many wonderful natural events. And I think he truly appreciates what he has. He's clearly passionate about what he has researched and written. And, you know, I can totally relate to that and get on board with it. Um, finally, for creativity, the, pa the chapters are so interesting and he has so many different questions and perspectives that I found myself wondering and thinking differently. I made many notes about adding some of that information to my teaching, um, connecting it to other readings that I've done recently. Uh, it was just, it was a really good book. I really liked it. I can see that maybe this review reads biased because I happen to love his books and I've read most of them. Uh, but I do truly believe that this book about the inner lives of animals is just amazing. It's as engaging as his tree book and as mind blowing as his weather book. I really look forward to reading his fourth book. I looked at it the other day at a bookstore, but they only had the illustrated edition and it was like $35 and I just couldn't get on board with that. So I'll wait until it's not an illustrated edition. Although the illustrated edition looked really cool, but $35 is a lot for a book. I can't, I can't uh, rationalize that cost. Um, I also wish that he didn't live in another country and speak a completely different language so that I could meet and speak to him. Um, but that seems highly unlikely. Uh, but if anybody has a hookup, I'm totally interested and I would like to get my book signed. <laughs> so uh, check out The Inner Life of Animals by Peter Volovan. It's an amazing book, 100%. The A-est of A's that I can give it. Uh, if you haven't read his other books, um, one is called The Hidden Life of Trees. It's excellent. If you like plants and you like trees, you should check it out. And then he also has a book called The Weather Detective. It is, I kind of, in my brain, I kind of categorize it as like an almanac, but like a modern day almanac. Uh, it's really good. It's very interesting. I learned a lot. I feel like I know a lot about weather, but um, from my own personal research, but I learned quite a bit from that book as well. I really enjoyed it. Uh, and then the last book that I haven't read yet is The Secret of Nature, and um, I hope to read that book soon. So Check it out. Have a great day and I will catch you next time.